If you are interested in seeing how I create custom logo designs, then keep on watching. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another episode of Wine and Design. As you can see, I got my little wine over here where we sip on wine and we talk about graphic design every single Wednesday. I'm so happy you're here. Today's video, I'm going to show you how I create custom logo designs for my clients. This is my favorite service to provide. I love doing logos. I find them so fun. I love getting to know the client on a deeper level and understanding the passion behind what they do. And that is why I like to make sure the logo fits within the soul of what they're doing. Understanding why they're doing what they're doing, the passion behind why they're doing it, because all those pieces of understanding who the client really is will allow me to create a logo that symbolizes them in a very unique way. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I do that and how I take my design direction and the mood board and the strategy and turn that into a working logo for the initial concept. I do provide three to four different initial concepts. That way they can kind of pick and choose what they do and don't like from different ones. I know there's so many ways to do this. Some people like to do the one logo concept method, which I think can work really amazingly. But for me, when I get going in my creative flow, I sometimes just create three to four that I love to present to my clients. And I figure why not show them options to choose from since they're paying a investment and a good amount in this package. So I'm so excited to show you how I do this and how I use Adobe Illustrator and Procreate on my iPad to create custom designs for my clients. Um, and then you'll also see a little insight into the brand design direction and the mood board. So enough said, let's hop on over to my screen and I'll show you how exactly I create them. All right, you guys, the first thing that I like to do when jumping into logos is sketching them on paper, which I did, but I'm actually hopping straight into drawing the iPad ideas that I have. So I'm using the app called Procreate. This is where I'm able to create any sort of illustration with my Apple Pencil. And I'm actually just tracing a picture of this model that was on Pinterest because it's like a perfect side profile, which is one of the visions I had for this logo. So I'm just kind of playing around with drawing out a line line art version of a side profile with some nice flowy hair because this brand is a hair extension company. So just trying to get um, a very modern visual of how to represent that. So I'm kind of just playing with that on the app Procreate and I do have an app, Apple iPad and it's the 11 version. I know I get questions on that. So that's what you'll see me doing here. I'm just gonna kind of speed it up a little bit because I was taking my time, which I recommend we all do because you wanna make sure that you're um, making it look as good as you can on this first round of logos so that you don't have to continue going back and forth for a bunch of rounds. So you'll see me taking my time with these illustrations and I'll come back to you when I bring it into Illustrator. <laughs> Okay, now that the illustration is pretty much how I want it, I'm just dragging it into Adobe Illustrator. And this is how you vectorize your illustrations or your graphics, as you might say. Um, so I'm gonna just bring that in and I'm going to image trace it as either a sketched art or a black and white logo. Usually black and white logo works fine for simple graphics like this, um, but you can play around with sketched art if it's maybe a little more complex. Um, and I'm just going to play with like the threshold, the noise, you'll see me kind of adjusting all of these settings and trying to make it look as perfect and smooth as I can. This actually sometimes makes it look even better than from when it was in the iPad. And sometimes like your iPad drawings might be a little pixelated, but this makes it vectorized and really high quality and nice. So playing around with that. And then once I get those settings right, I always hit ignore white so that it removes the background for me. And you will see me make those changes in just a second. But this is how I always turn my sketched art into vectorized graphics. Drink a little water, feel a little 
So I have the idea of putting this icon in here, but making the hair kind of connect with all parts of this arch shape that I just created. So I'm going to mess around with the pen tool to create lines. Um, I'm also just kind of playing around dragging them down, which kind of works, but won't work for, as you can see, the one that's all connected even to the face. So I'm going to mess around with the pen tool. I might even try playing with the paintbrush tool to extend the lines to be longer. Um, and then when you're using the pen tool, you can actually click and hold to get it a curved line. And I don't know why I wasn't doing that <laughs> at this very moment, but if you do want to get curved lines, you can just do the pen tool, click to the next spot, but hold and drag and get those curves. So kind of just playing around to see how this looks and if I want to move forward with it. Okay, so I messed around with some of the graphics that I drew on my iPad, but now I'm just playing with fonts and figuring out how I want to display these in the best way for her. So to do what I'm doing right here, I'm actually just using an offset path under the path option on the top of your screen. You should be able to do offset path, but you're going to want to make sure you have all the layers selected before you create an offset path. And then you select everything again and you'll see these areas that you can delete by using the shape builder tool you can just hold option i believe it is and clicking on the lines that you want deleted to get it kind of like a cutout effect so that's what i was doing here i'm just playing with like the fonts and i really want to use a serif font for her brand because it's just very like luxurious serif fonts really evoke a feeling of trust and respect and kind of just like high level so that's why i was using more serif fonts for her branding um, but i'm just going to continue playing around with having it look cut out from the letters and honestly i sometimes don't even use these concept concepts i just play around with it until i find something that i really really like Falling 
So I'm really, really liking the way this concept's coming together. And I actually wanted to add some sort of like tagline. So I was looking for different fonts to kind of make a tagline text stand out. Um, and then you'll see me go to her website in a second because I was looking for just some sort of like piece of text that represents what she does. And then on her footer, I found this piece of text that said, highlight your beauty. Um, well, it was highlight their beauty, but I wanted to highlight your beauty and kind of play with that. So I'm looking for like a script font. I never use script font, but I thought that looked really cool. So we did that for this concept and I actually really like it. So now that I've narrowed down the concepts to the ones I want to present to her for this first round, I'm putting them in a letter size document and labeling them concept one, two, three, four. And then I'm also making sure I have primary, secondary, and submark descriptions for each one of these so she knows exactly. Because one of the things I've realized, a lot of clients don't understand that having a primary, secondary, and submark is important. Um, it kind of seems confusing at first for like non-designers because it's like, why would you want three versions of the logo? But I always like to explain it like a submark logo is something you'd use on like a profile photo, whereas a primary would be on like signage or something like that. And also it's nice having a mark that's recognizable without always having to like write out the brand name every time. So that's always my goal and that's kind of how I explain it. Um, but I'm just kind of playing around with color options. That's actually something else I provided in this first round was color options so she can see how it looks when it's filled in or when it's outlined. So you'll see me kind of creating the submarks in each one of those. All right, you guys, this is the final first round of logos I sent over to her and how I deliver those. So concept one, the color options. I also had pages where I described why I did certain things, but this all came together and I'm so happy with it. I'm excited to hear what the client says.
All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed seeing me create some custom logos from scratch, drawing them and putting them together into a mark that they can use for a timeless amount of time, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, but thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it so much if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe down below. If you're interested in getting a logo created by me, I'd love to talk to you. I do have my email always linked down below if you wanna reach out and also head to my website and contact me on my own inquiry form. I'd love to talk to you and I'm only taking a select amount of clients this year. So if you are interested, I recommend filling that out sooner than later. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in my next one.